do things. And uh, luckily, we, I like to go with Will because he's got a truck separate from his home. And I really find that convenient. So why don't I introduce you to Will. Will, this is our audience, our friends in the audience. Hello, friends. My name's Will. Nice to meet you. And uh, how long have you been uh, doing this, Will? Is it just a long time? Started out? No, I'm very new. I uh, started out in August. So I left the East Coast in August with my rig as set as could be, and I've been, uh, you know, making my way out west and making improvements along the way. So, how what have you thought so far? Well, so far, I wish I had done it ten years ago. Uh, the so many things about the community and the lifestyle and the weather are just uh, just amazing. So I'm, I'm really, really happy to be out here in Quartzsite right now and just, uh, you know, continuing to learn and, and, and really just enjoy the lifestyle. You know, all of this life is a big compromise between comfort and mobility and tra ease of travel. So if you want a lot of comfort, you buy a big RV and you get a lot of comfort but they're hard to drive around and they're very expensive to drive around and uh, and if you go the opposite direction say to a Prius well you can get 50 miles to the gallon in a Prius but you don't get any comfort at all so somewhere in there is the sweet spot and you seem to have found it I think well I feel good about that thank you you know and especially uh, that I'm going solo so I, I really uh, designed this whole rig for just myself, for my own comfort and my own uh, mobility. So, you know, if one was two or more people, you know, you might want to go a little bigger. This is not a two-person rig, so just to keep that in mind. But for me, solo works like a charm. Great, great. So you started with a Toyota Tacoma. Uh, this four-wheel drive. Yes, four-wheel drive. Yes. And pretty good gas mileage. Yeah, with and without, you know, with the rig, depending on my driving and the, the landscape, uh, I'm averaging anywhere from uh, 14 to 16 miles per gallon. With it on. With it on. The camper on. The camper on. And without, you know, I'm getting 18 to 20. That's still really good. It's really good. Yeah. Really good. Yeah, you could be, for, for all the comfort you have and the mobility, a four-wheel drive Tacoma will go almost anywhere. Yeah, that's right. That's right. And just to keep in mind, you know, I was very interested in the smaller truck, so if you decide for the smaller truck, there's a few companies that make the, uh, the truck camper specifically for a smaller truck. So this truck camper was made to fit on a Tacoma, a Ranger, uh, you know, a small Chevy, uh, weight-wise and, uh, you know, uh, width-wise. You know, I looked at the bigger ones, the truck campers, but then I would have had to go up to a Tundra or an F-250. So smaller truck, smaller camper, and it all fits and works. And you wouldn't be getting that kind of gas mileage. Exactly, yes. And you would, it's pleasant. Driving the Tacoma around is really pleasant and easy. It's very nice, yeah. yeah. It's a nice oh. little truck. And like Bob said initially, the big plus is, you know, I've been in camp here for almost two weeks now, and drop it, take care of it, and then I've got my truck to use just like a truck. So it's very convenient that way. I'm not hauling my camper around all the time. Well, why don't we take a look at your camper? Okay. So you're looking for the balance of uh, comfort and uh, and mobility, and your to your Tacoma gives you the mobility, That's fantastic right. mobility, and and reasonably cheap to drive around. Yes. How comfortable have you found the camper? Why don't you show us? Oh my God, so comfortable. But just one quick thing before we go in the camper to finish up with the truck. The one upgrade that I made on this truck, which I highly recommend, is I put the uh, Firestone uh, airbags in. So they're not that expensive, and these are connected. There's two airbags in there that uh, are connected to a compressor that I can level out and raise up, and it just makes the ride uh, super, super smooth. So anybody considering this kind of rig, uh, you know, think about the airbags. With the weight of the camper, yeah, that'd be. I would think it'd be essential. Yeah, well, it takes you know, it just takes the pressure off the frame and the springs, and uh, and it just makes the ride super smooth. Well, let's take a look at your camper. Your camper. Yeah. So if you want to, by having the camper separate, if you want to just make a quick trip into town, you just jump in the truck and you go, just yeah. like you lived at home. You yeah. have a daily driver. You have a home. Uh, that is just such a huge advantage. So many people are their home and their, their rig are the same. So if they want to go into town, they have to break camp. They have to, uh, if they have an awning out, they have to put it away or or whatever they have, just whatever they have out. 
uh, they break their camp, they drive into town, they leave stuff in camp, risking theft or, or loss or wind damage. Uh, but now you're everything, everything of yours is secured and locked up in the camper uh, and, and you can leave it safely at home. That's correct. So let's take a look at the camper. Looks like a travel light yep. and it was made specifically for this truck. Yeah, travel light has two models uh, made for the smaller trucks. This is the 690 FD, which I have, and they also make a smaller, lighter one, uh, a 625. So travel light, uh, northern light, and living light all make the smaller slide-ons for the truck. So yeah, this is this is the travel light 690 FD, and uh, obviously, you know, these are the cranks. So when I take it off the truck, I have to crank it down. And I do this in case of you know severe winds because it's a little boxy. And I've also taken the extra precaution of taking these are the truck tie downs. This is what ties the camper to the truck. And I've just put some nice heavy duty stakes and just decided to stake it down just in case we get that rare freak you know uh, uh, rogue wind. I don't want to blow over in the middle of the night. And uh, how much does this weigh? This weighs uh, dry 1,100 pounds. 1,100 pounds. Yep. Oh, that's very light. That's nice and light. Yeah. It is. Uh, yeah. And right. I can see why your Toyota can handle it so well. Yeah. Yeah. And are you doing pretty? You know, you, in back east, uh, there aren't so many big hills, but you've run through a whole bunch out here. How's it doing going up hills? I've been fine. You know, one of the things I have done is uh, actually before I came out west, I read your website very carefully, the sections you did on hill driving, and it was really helpful. So took my time, followed the rules, and I was fine. Good. Yeah. That's really the thing with hills is just take your time and yeah. think it through. Think it through. Yeah. Right. Right. Good. So in, in every way, this is working out super well for you right now. In in every way, yeah. And when we you know look inside, I can talk about some of the, you know, the upgrades that I've been making and the modifications for my own right. comfort. Because you've had enough experience now to find some things that worked really well yeah. and some things this is working really well, yeah. but you found some things that didn't work well. Why don't you show us the inside and we'll talk about some of those. Okay, come on in. So this is the 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 happy home of me and I'll just sort of take you around it and just maybe talk in general a little bit. Uh, this is what I call the kitchen area and it has a two burner stove that works off a propane tank and it's been working great. Uh, right above it I have all of my dishes stored so pots and pans and dishes are right here my blender is right there uh, you know this works really well when I'm cooking here uh, the the counter area is very adequate and I have a nice uh, sink here with running water so I can wash up here, I can brush my teeth, I can use the water for cooking. Uh, so this area is very, very convenient for me. Uh, storage for my pots and pans above, and I also have secondary storage here for um, you know, various dry goods. So I've come to really love this little area. And then moving along, I have a, a little sitting area, which I get very comfortable here. Uh, you know, just, a, just an area to sit. And these, uh, all of these, you know, fold down if need be. So I can pull this out and push this down, and then I can make a, a secondary bed here or a long sofa. But I have some stuff here. But if I was having a visitor, you know, I would be able to accommodate them for two people. So everything is kind of movable here. The what I consider the. Uh, what shall I say, the, the crowning jewel of this whole experience is my bed. Because I like to get a good night's sleep. That was important to me. I like to stay dry and warm and comfortable. So this is an actual full-size bed. And it came with a, a fairly nice mattress. And I added uh, an inch and a half memory foam, which I highly recommend. Holds your weight, contours to your body, super, super comfortable. So I have this space up here, and then I have you know reading lights for the evening when it gets dark, and there's there's not a better feeling than to hear the rain pattering on the roof and uh, you know being tucked into a cozy bed. So this is really nice, and I continue to enjoy it and get a good night's sleep. Uh, so let's keep coming around. This is my newest addition, 
And second to the bed, this is the, the second crowning jewel. When I first uh, bought the rig and got on the road, I was using this, uh, this Dometic built-in three-way. Uh, nothing wrong with it. It works on propane, 12 volt, or 120. But there's a lot of uh, considerations, yes? So you have to, when, when you're using the propane, you have to be very level. When you're driving, you have to switch it over to 12 volt. It doesn't really keep it that cold. So this was bothering me. And I started noticing more experienced people had uh, solar panels and they had a solar refrigerator and they, they actually have a refrigerator. So what I did just a couple of weeks ago uh, with the help of the film crew, I purchased uh, an Ingle 45 quart fridge freezer specifically made for solar and 12 volt. So this thing is just a beautiful machine, a very high quality, comes with this nice basket. I've got plenty of room, keeps the food super cold. And I never have to worry about ice or switching from propane to 12 volt or working within the limitations of the, the refrigerator that, that came with the camper. So I would, uh, you know, invite you to think about how you're going to keep your food cold because it's a, it's a very big issue uh, when you're on the road. So anyway, this is, uh, this is my new baby. And I decided to put it here because I'm by myself and the, 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 the rig was made just for me. So I'm not really concerned with, with, with having guests, although I can accommodate a few guests. So maybe we'll find a new place for it, but it, it fits well here. Gives me some space for my books. Yes? So then moving along, I have a, a nice fan here, which uh, at, at this point will only provide exhaust out of here. And I just talked to a gentleman last week that, that advised me that I don't have to replace the motor or the whole fan. I can just get a new switch. Put a new switch in and then I can have exhaust and intake as well. So that's on my, uh, my list of things to do. Good. So moving around some more, let me show you this. So what I've done, because I'm no longer using this for refrigeration, is I've just turned it into dry storage. And it's really, really nice. Opposite my kitchen, my cooking, my pots and pans, have my refrigeration, and I have dry storage. So I'm really enjoying it for dry storage. And you were considering selling it, but you decided to keep it. Yeah, I've decided to keep it for now because un until I find uh, somebody that can, you know, really help me configure it, uh, I don't want to kind of mess it up. So then um, moving along, getting back to my solar refrigerator, what I've just done is I've just had uh, uh, a solar panel put on the roof because when I first got on the road, I, uh, I had the, the Renogy 100 watt uh, portables, which you know provided some solar power for me, but w would not run the refrigerator. So what I did is I sold the battery, the Renergy portables, and just upgraded to a real solar system. So I have a 265 watt panel on the roof. I have this uh, Blue Sky uh, controller, and then my batteries are in here. So I have two 12 volt, 104 amp deep cell batteries. So my system is pretty nice right now. And I'm very happy with it. Well, those Lifeline extenders are just about the best battery you can buy. Are they? Yeah, they will, yeah. yeah. That's that's what they told me. And with the with the good balance of power, that large panel and these batteries, you could easily be looking at eight to ten years of life out of yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. And 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 they're handling all my power needs because the other thing that I wanted to have, I I showed you my blender earlier. Uh, so if you have an appliance that's important to you, and you want to run it, you need to think that through in terms of you know, how many watts, how much energy, and then how you're gonna convert your DC to your AC. I wasn't aware of this at first, and I learned, like I said, from um, all the help here in the camps. So what I've done is I, uh, I, I kind of gutted this area here, and I put this really nice uh, uh, Samplex 1500 watt DC to AC inverter. So this is coming off of these batteries, my inverter, and then I have a, a plug up there where I can run my blender, I can charge my laptop, my cell phone. Uh, so I have, have a, have, I have a good amount of power now and I'm very happy with it. And that's a pure sine wave. 
Yes, thank you, Bob. That's an important consideration. I, uh, I actually, uh, through, uh, just through my own ignorance, I didn't understand the difference between the, the modified inverter and the pure sign inverter. And I went through two inverters that I had to return that weren't working because only, not because they didn't have the right uh, power, modified will only run certain things. I upgraded to the pure sign, works like a charm. This is my clothing storage. So I just, this is a, just a simple little closet where I keep uh, t-shirts and, uh, and some, some basic things. So plenty of storage there. And the, uh, you know, the nice thing about having the uh, extra cab on the uh, pickup truck is that I can, I've put some crates in there so I can keep secondary clothes, some winter clothes and things. Uh, so I really like that, that I can just keep in here what I use. As you can see, it's very simple, uh, you know, very kind of minimal but I am super, super comfortable. The last thing I want to show you with this rig that's come in handy in the morning is I have a thermostat here. And so I can set this thermostat and I have a, uh, a furnace right here. And so I don't use the heat when I'm sleeping, but a little chilly in the morning, I put the thermostat up and uh, you know, within five minutes, the place is toasty warm. So the level of comfort is, uh, is very high. So, that's the inside of the rig. The rig does have an outside shower, it doesn't have an indoor shower. And that's a good point, James, because the, the trade-off with the bigger rigs is you have the choice of an indoor toilet or an indoor shower. But you need a much bigger truck and we're in a whole different category. So I elected to not have the indoor plumbing so I could have it small and mobile. Uh, and I don't really use the outdoor shower because I try to conserve water. But I have to tell you, I have not been happier with this little item. So what I do is I boil a pot of water and I pour the hot water in here and get the temperature just right. And then I just pump it up. This is a, a you know a simple gallon gardening sprayer. Costs maybe four bucks at, uh, at your local store. And so I pump it up and I find an appropriate spot and I just spray spray myself down and it feels really good with the hot water and then i put it aside soap up and then i spray again and if i have any water left over i undo it and just pour it over my head and i have to say not a lot of water nice and warm and i feel just as clean and refreshed as if i took a shower at home so i'm, I'm really impressed with uh with myself I've even used it you know, when I'm on the road at a rest stop I just go in a stall have some privacy and spray myself down and come out feeling uh, you know nice and refreshed so so you don't have any tanks in the camper you don't have a black or gray no no tanks as you can see this little hose coming out is just from my sink so this little hose is just uh, you know direct out so uh, you know just clean water that I mean you know little washing dishes or that kind of thing well, you do actually have one tank. Well, I have a, water. a tank for fresh water, which is about an eight gallon tank. So I have an eight gallon fresh water tank that I use for my sink, uh, you know, washing dishes and brushing my teeth and the rest I just sort of have water is for drinking. A, so there's not a hot water heater? Well, this unit did come with a hot water heater. I removed it in order to put that inverter in there. So that was one of the modifications I made. I didn't really use the hot water because I have this unit. So I removed it because I wasn't using it, alleviated myself of some weight, and now I have more storage space. And uh, speaking of alleviating yourself, yes. how do you uh, alleviate yourself? Well, that's a good question. Let me get that for you. I got two parts to this. Well, I gotta say, the first part looks very familiar to me. Yep. So and uh, the, the second part looks very familiar to so me. So there's two parts to this. And one of the things that I like about this, being a, being a yogi and a yoga teacher, I'll show you in a second. So what I do is I, I got the right size bucket for myself. I put a little plastic bag in there. And then what I do is I squat <laughs> over it, yes? and. This is the preferred method to alleviate yourself. 
you know, sitting on a seat is not good, but to squat is really, really good for eliminating yourself. So I do my business in there, and then I just simply tie the bag up and throw it in the trash. So it's nice and simple and clean and easy. And, uh, and then I have, you know, the privacy if I'm on the road or something or, you know, and, and I can immediately remove it and, uh, you know, keep it, keep it very sanitary. So I've been really happy with this little system. So, you know, that's the trade-off that a lot of people, you know, uh, sort of go back and forth with. Do I want an indoor toilet? Do I want an indoor shower? Personal choice, but then you pay the price in a bigger rig and you don't have the, the sort of the, you know, the, the economy of space that I have. And, and the big effect is that you go from 16 to 18 miles to the gallon down to 8 to 12. And that's right. That's so you can get the tanks and the toilet and the shower. That's right. And for some people, that's more than worth it. That's a, that's uh, right. a sacrifice they're glad to make. Uh, and for some people, it's not. For you and for me, it's just not worth that. That's right. It. That's right. But there's always a trade-off of comfort and mobility and costs. And the sweet spot is in there, different for everyone. That's right. And this one is a really good one for you. That's right. So then, what? Uh, well, just to summarize, kind of what did you do right? What are you just really happy with and what did you do wrong and you had to fix? Yep. Well, what I'm really happy with is the size of the rig. You know, and I think that's the thing that uh, I had to be most honest with myself. You know, is what was I willing to live with realistically? Because I spend a lot of time in there. And if it's a couple of days of rain or it gets cold, I'm in my rig. So what I did right is I realistically assessed how much space I'll be comfortable with without suffering. Uh, the other thing I feel I did right is I came up with a combination of the truck camper and the truck so I can remove the truck when I want to and just, just have my truck. So I think those two things that I did right. On the other, on the other hand, uh, the, the, the solar, I didn't really understand anything about solar and I just went and bought a portable system. And even though it worked fairly well, I could have been more patient with that. I could have been more patient and waited till I got some, you know, people actually in the field doing it and then built my system around that. Uh, well, let me comment on that, that people are all the time asking me how much solar should they buy. And my, I have one answer for everyone, and that's all you can afford. Because it's so easy to decide, well, I really missed this and I wish I had got this. And then, to, and then you got to chuck your system and start all over. Yeah. But if you buy all you can afford, uh, that's not likely to happen. Now, right. if that was all you could afford, right. then then that's all you can afford. It's right. not even a question. Then that's what you can afford, and you buy that. Right. But if you could buy more, the answer is almost always to buy all you can afford. Yeah. And you'll, I, no one has ever said I have too much solar. Yeah. yeah. A lot of people have said, darn it, I don't have enough solar. Yeah. Yeah. Well, one of the things our audience, our friends in the audience are wanting to know is how much does this all cost you? Because this is a pretty nice setup. Uh, would you, you, are you comfortable with talking numbers and telling us what you paid? Yeah, certainly. Yeah, no problem with that. Uh, yeah, I was very fortunate that, you know, in that year of preparation, I was also, you know, downsizing and consolidating and, uh, you know, really also financially preparing. So basically, I got a really nice deal on the truck. You know, these smaller Toyota trucks are just all over the place. And uh, I found one in really good shape. It's a 2004, and I paid uh, $8,000 for that. Seems like a very good deal. A very good deal. Uh, they're out there, these deals. This was uh, sold to me by a mechanic that took excellent shape of it. So it had high miles on it. It had like around 180,000 miles, but almost everything had been redone, new frame. So $8,000 for the truck. I wound up buying the camper new. You know, one of the things with, with trying to purchase something like this is when you start looking on the, the websites and Craigslist, you know, a lot of them are across the country. And I'd see something nice, but I had to drive to Ohio or Arkansas to purchase it. This was close to home, brand new. I paid $9,000 for this. That well, strikes me as being a very good price. Well, I found a dealer who was basically liquidating everything and he was changing careers. It was the last thing on the lot. He just wanted off the lot, so I got I got it actually at cost. So the deals are out there. Uh, the upgrade on my solar 
I put that, that panel on the roof. The panel, I believe, cost around uh, $250. Uh, the, the controller that you saw, the thing with the, the numbers that, uh, that transmits the power from the panel into the batteries, uh, that was $280. Uh, the batteries were very pricey. The batteries were uh, a little under $300 a piece, maybe $275 a piece. And then the refrigerator, I decided because I like my food cold, uh, to go with a high-end solar fridge. It's a 45-quart angle. It costs $910. And there are, there are ones out there that are not that expensive and, and, and do a good job as well. Yes. So, you know, I was fortunate uh, to be able to, uh, you know, get what I wanted to do and spend it. So that's the total numbers for, you know, the, the solar and the truck and the camper together. Well, a lot of key is that the year of preparation was that you sold things and got built up some cash. That's right. You knew you were retiring, so yes. uh, you can get rid of a lot of things and build up some cash. And for a lot of you, those are pretty big numbers, and you probably can't go out and spend them. On, on every step of the way, you can buy less. You can buy a little less expensive truck, a little maybe a little older, a little more miles. You could buy a used camper. Um, and on the solar, particularly on the solar, you can buy cheaper systems. And on all of these things, there's always the compromise of do you buy the best that you know is going to last a really long time and spend more? Or do you buy in between quality that is good, but not as good? Uh, that's always a hard question, and your budget is the answer. And if you if you can't afford the best, then you buy good. And so instead of the Ingle for 900, maybe you would have bought an ARB, which is a very good fridge for 700, or maybe a Dometic for 500. The options are out there. Uh, and on the solar panel, you could have gone with something like a Renogy, uh, which would be much less money and probably last you nearly as long, but still not as good. So like with the batteries, it's the most expensive battery, one of the most expensive batteries you could find, but that battery should last you 10 years. And if you take the almost 600 that they cost over 10 years, that's $60 a year. So if you think of it that way, uh, buying the best sometimes is the most economical way to do it. You buy a cheaper battery that lasts five years and is only $100 less than you've lost money. So it's a tough one. Yeah, uh, it seems like you compromised perfectly. You got a great truck for a really good price, uh, and and in some places, you buy an older RV, used RV. Maybe it's leaking. Maybe yeah. you got hidden problems, yeah. mold. Uh, it seems like you found the sweet spot all the way around on old and new, best and not so good. Uh, and it has to add the sweet spots different for everybody. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, it's a matter, a lot of it's a matter of personal preference and like you said, working within your budget and uh, and I do believe not trying to get it perfect. You know, I've been out here for a couple of months now and I'm continuing to upgrade and tweak it and make it just right. So, you know, and, and, and talking to a lot of the community, that's an unending thing. Yeah, it sure you, is. you never get to this, you know, perfect place, just like life. You're always, you know, finding little ways you can do it. So. I say the sooner the better. It's beautiful out here and uh, we're having fun. So come on out and join us.